Let us move to the next level of application. What do I mean by next level of application? In the previous case or the previous level of application, the fluid was under rest, under static condition. Now, we allowed the fluid to move, but not in a general way as a rigid body. It should move, the entire body of fluid should move. I have a container and let us say it is uh, partly filled with liquid, we are going to discuss only liquid and it is moving like this. Okay. Remember this we called as translation, it could also be rotate also, the entire body of fluid, fluid could rotate also, that is also rigid body motion, but that will take us to cylindrical coordinates. So, to avoid that we are only considering translation of the entire body of liquid as a example for rigid body motion. If you look at books, they discuss both translation and rigid body rotation, just to avoid cylindrical coordinates we will discuss only translation of the entire fluid body as an example for rigid body motion. When you say fluid and rigid body motion, it may look little paradoxical also, because we are saying fluid, but rigid body also. Usually the word rigid body is for solids, but here the entire body moves like a rigid body, that is the meaning of this fluid in rigid body motion. Now, what is the best example? Of course, the best example is during summer time when uh, tanker lorries carry water from one place to other. We have, uh, let us imagine this to be a, uh, let us say, uh, imagine the front of the lorry here and then it travels and then it carries water. This entire body of water travels along with the tanker lorry. So, that is the best example which you can usually visualize uh, for this rigid body motion. Need not be water, you can see on a daily basis. Uh, tanker lo uh, lorries carrying milk, it could be even gasoline. So, any such uh, liquid uh, being transported is the best example for fluid in rigid body motion. The fluid alone cannot be exist in and move in rigid body motion, it should be in some container and that container moves as a rigid body. So, the fluid in the container also moves as a rigid body, okay. that is what is shown here and we are interested in the uh, shape of the free surface. Let us, uh, you will understand as we go along. Let us proceed. The entire mass of fluid moves like a rigid body, that is a definition. Okay. We have been telling rigid body several times and we said, uh, <coughs> uh, we have discussed about rigid body when we discussed about uh, strain for uh, solids, we discussed about rigid body when we discuss discussed about strain rate for uh, um, fluids and we said, uh, uh, rigid body motion includes translation, rotation, they do not contribute to viscous stresses. Now, time has come where we can really understand and uh, have a practical example as well. Okay. Okay. So, entire mass of fluid moves like a rigid body. Example is a fluid in a tank that translates, okay. we have seen an example for that. Okay. How do you now put more physically? We have used, uh, um, we have described uh, in several ways, let us get into the physics. Now, <coughs> when the entire mass of liquid moves and see the way the case what we are discussing is the fluid accelerates and uh, which means that uh, the every particle in the liquid also has the same acceleration. Let us say the lorry accelerates, then every particle, every fluid particle also has the same acceleration. That is why this sentence is each particle has the same acceleration. Now, if what does it mean? If you consider two fluid particles, there is no difference in the velocity, both have the same velocity only and you, you are having a fluid body and that is translating. If you focus on let us say two fluid particles, they have the same velocity, there is no difference in velocity. Okay. So, no difference in velocity between any two fluid particles, which means that there is no velocity gradient obviously if you take two particles which are nearby each other, no velocity difference, no velocity gradient. Now, what did we say? For normal strain rate, shear strain rate to exist, there should be velocity gradient. In fact, we express the strain rates in terms of velocity gradients. Now, there are no velocity gradients here, which means that there are no normal strain, strain rates, there are no shear strain rates, there is no deformation or more precisely there is no rate of deformation, because we are discussing fluids, we should say there is no rate of deformation in this case. Okay. 
which means that there is no viscous stresses. Look at the hierarchy nicely you are discussed from rigid body motion to no viscous stresses okay. let us and that is why we this is what we have discussed earlier also rigid body motion does not contribute to viscous stresses only when there is normal strain rate shear strain rate it contributes to viscous stresses ok. So, let us quickly repeat this I have a body uh, moving body of fluid moving in uh, <coughs> as a rigid body motion it just translates and if you take any two fluid particles there is no difference in velocity there is no velocity gradient there is no strain rate either normal strain rate or shear strain rate because there is no velocity gradient and because there are no strain rates there are no viscous stresses normal uh, viscous stresses and shear viscous stresses also ok. okay no viscous stresses at all ok. Like to mention in the previous case also there were no viscous stresses this case also there is no viscous stress, but there is a difference. The previous case there were no viscous stresses because the fluid was under rest condition. In this case there is no viscous stress not because the fluid is stationary it is moving in a rigid body motion because it is moving in a rigid body motion there are no velocity gradients no strain rates hence there is no viscous stress. That is why we put both these under the same category remember we said the title for the present section of discussion is fluid under rest and under rigid body motion what connects these two is no viscous stresses. So, if you want to be more formal title the first level of applications are where there are no viscous stresses and one in which one uh, in which the fluid is not at all moving other in which the fluid is moving like a rigid body ok. okay what are the governing equations we now discuss the physics let us look at the governing equations. So, let us write the navier stokes equation straight away written in terms of the substantial derivative on the left hand side and right hand side the body forces and surface forces. Now, when we derive the navier stokes equation we express this equation in a compact form in a vectorial form as shown here ok. Please recall the discussion earlier under uh, navier stokes equation first we derive the navier stokes equation then we expressed from a material point particle point of view and then express that vectorially as shown here. So, left hand side we have rho d v vector by d t right hand side rho g vector minus gradient of p and then the Laplacian of the velocity vector. Now, when the fluid is in rigid body motion the entire body translates with uniform velocity that is what we said if, if you take two fluid particles there is no difference in velocity what does it mean? there is one velocity for the entire body of fluid every point has the same velocity and that velocity we will take as capital V of t why, why is a new nomenclature introduced V is the velocity of the fluid we said every fluid particle here has the same velocity that velocity we take as capital V vector of t remember this V vector is imposed by us remember v is also a function of time what is the best example let us say the lorry starts and then it accelerates that is v as a function of time ok, okay. the v capital v vector as a function of time. So, now the left hand side we have d v vector by d t v is the velocity of the fluid in this case that small v is equal to capital v vector of t best example for v capital v vector as a function of time is just imagine the lorry starting from rest and then accelerating ok. And now, so d v by d t where v is the capital V is the acceleration, acceleration of the entire fluid body which is equal to acceleration of the lorry ok please keep that in mind and that acceleration is a known quantity or a given quantity or imposed by us unlike the acceleration due to gravity which is the uh, body force this acceleration is imposed by us that depends on how 
fast the velocity changes, how fast the velocity of the lorry changes that determines this acceleration. So, the acceleration is a value given imposed by us. The fluid body also accelerates at the same uh, acceleration as the lorry. Okay. So, <coughs> so, having understood that uh, the acceleration of the fluid is same as that of the lorry and that is denoted by A which is a given quantity. Let us proceed further. We have discussed that there are no viscous stresses. So, these terms will not contribute. Let us see how does the equation sim, uh, simplify, how do we represent. Left hand side we write as rho d v by d t for the fluid is equal to d v by d t where v represents the velocity external imposed velocity and the derivative of that is the acceleration. Okay. We usually the given data is in terms of acceleration either directly or indirectly. So, left hand side rho into acceleration, right hand side we have rho into g vector and then of course, minus gradient of b. The third term does not appear because there are no viscous stresses. Okay. Okay, now, let us put this equation in component form. The x component rho a x is equal to rho g x minus dou p by dou x and the y component of that vectorial equation and the z component of that vectorial equation. Now, to proceed further as we have done in the case of fluid and arrest, we should decide the coordinate axis. So, we will choose the same coordinate axis which we have chosen earlier. X is horizontal axis, z is a vertical axis and y is perpendicular to the slide. Okay. Now, once you have chosen this coordinate axis, g x is 0, g y is 0 and g s 0 is minus g, same as what we have discussed earlier. Okay. That is why it is important to choose the coordinate axis, so that we can assign values for g x, g y and g z. Okay. So, so let us uh, rearrange this equation. The way in which we rearrange this equation is that the unknown here is pressure. So, we take all the gradients of pressure on the left hand side and the known quantities on the right hand side. Okay. So, let us rearrange g of course, is known to you and as I have been telling you a is the imposed value given by us the acceleration of the lorry. Okay. So, let us write the first equation as rho p by rho x is equal to minus rho a x and similarly, the y direction of course, rho g x that term does not appear, rho g y that term also does not appear and in the z direction we have taken dou p by dou z to the left hand side, right hand side we have rho g z and then minus rho a z, g z is minus g. So, the right hand side becomes minus rho into g plus a z. So, these are the three equations that uh, describe the pressure distribution in a fluid in rigid body motion. Okay. So, now let us uh, proceed further, let us see how do we use this equation to analyze further. Okay. Now, what we are going to consider is a linear accelerating motion. What does it mean? The example is an open container of fluid translating along a straight path with constant acceleration. What does it mean? I have a, okay, let us take the lorry and uh, it accelerates along x direction, it accelerates along x direction. Other example what we can take is, let us say you have a body of fluid in a lift and the lift accelerates in the z direction. So, we are going to consider acceleration in the x direction. Other possibility is acceleration in the z direction. The example is a container of let us say a bucket of water in a uh, lift which is either accelerating up or accelerating downwards. We are not going to consider acceleration in the y direction okay, just for simplicity, but we consider acceleration in the x direction 
and z direction as well both acceleration can also be there what does it mean in terms of movement it could accelerate this direction it could accelerate in this direction or it could accelerate in this direction in the same plane but not in the y direction okay. okay so it could accelerate here x direction accelerate in this direction or it could accelerate in this direction as well which is in the x z plane okay so here you will have only ax here you will have only az in this case you will have both ax and az okay and that's what you're going to see now so ax not equal to 0 we consider in the case where ay is 0 there is no acceleration in the y direction it can happen but for simplicity we are not taking it account and az is not equal to 0 so how do the equation simplify we have dou p by dou x is equal to minus rho ax and we had here minus rho a y because a y is 0 the right hand side is 0 and of course this we have seen in the last slide dou p by dou z is equal to minus rho g plus a z. So what is the only simplification we have done we have taken the acceleration along y direction to be 0 so second equation becomes dou p by dou y is equal to 0 no other change compared to the previous case. Now we will consider uh, in this x z plane two points and uh, look at the difference in pressure between these two points. So let us say one point is at x and z and the other point is at x plus dx and z plus dz. Okay. Now in this case pressure is a function of x comma z depends on two variables. Okay. So the total differential dp can be written in terms of the partial derivatives dou p by dou x into dx plus dou p by dou z into dz. p depends on x and z so we know that the total differential can be expressed in terms of partial differential according to this equation. Now we will uh, substitute for dou p by dou x and dou p by dou z from this set of equations dou p by dou x is minus rho a x and dou p by dou z is minus rho into g plus a z. Now as we said we are interested in the shape of the free surface what is free surface? Free surface is one which is exposed to the atmosphere and along the free surface along the surface the pressure is a constant. So along we will consider a line of constant pressure which means dp is 0. So when you substitute dp equal to 0 here you can find the slope of the surface a slope of the line as dz by dx just substitute dp equal to 0 and rearrange for dz by dx which is the slope of the surface okay, because z is vertical axis x is horizontal axis and what do you get is minus ax by g plus az. Okay. So what is the um, physical interpretation of this equation? Let us say a lorry is accelerating in this direction ax is positive. This equation tells you that the slope will be negative and that is why in all the figures right from the beginning we have been seeing a uh, surface sloping in this direction which has a negative slope. Okay. Ax is positive dz by dx which represent the slope of the surface or the line is negative that is why we have drawn the surface in this orientation. It also tells you that to begin with the liquid level will be this way let us say horizontal surface and the lorry is accelerating in this direction the at the back side the level will increase on the front side the level will decrease. So you will have a surface like this. Okay. Of course this we have seen water, milk, gasoline in a tanker accelerating along the road that is the best example which you can think of. And also like to mention that uh, suppose if the lorry is not accelerating then of course Ax is 0 the surface will be horizontal okay. of course 
we are in the more interesting case is where the law is accelerating. Okay. Okay. Now, let us take the other case where you have a container in a lift, let us see what happens. If A x equal to 0, okay, because the lift travels only vertically up and down. So, A x is 0, you have only A z not equal to 0. Okay. Example is of course, water in a tank in an accelerating lift okay. and that is what is shown here. Okay. The acceleration is shown in the downward direction, it could be in the upward direction also. Okay. So, now what happens to the uh, equation? What happens to this slope? d z by d x is equal to minus a x by g plus a z. Because a x equal to 0, we get the slope to be 0, which means the surface will be horizontal and that is why a horizontal surface has been shown here. So, if you take a bucket of water, put it in an elevator, the surface will not have a slope, it will just be flat. Okay. Fluid surface will be horizontal. Okay. Now, what are the equations? Dou p by dou x is equal to 0 because a x is 0, this anyway has been 0 in the previous case also. Now, pressure varies only along the z direction, so it becomes d p by d z which is given by minus rho g plus a z. Okay. Pressure varies linearly with depth, same conclusion which I have discussed earlier, but now what is the difference? We have this extra a z term. Pressure varies linearly with the depth, now it has two contributions, one is gravity, acceleration due to gravity and then other is the externally imposed acceleration. Both of them together determine the variation of pressure with the distance. Okay. So, pressure varies linearly with the depth, but two contributions are there. Okay. Acceleration due to gravity, of course, that is natural and one externally imposed acceleration, acceleration of the lift. Okay. Now, what is the terminology? We do not call this as hydrostatic pressure distribution we call this as pressure distribution only. We do not use the word hydrostatic, we say pressure distribution and it is not hydrostatic. Why? Only if it is due to gravity alone, we call that as hydrostatic, but now the pressure variation is due to acceleration due to gravity and external acceleration and hence we do not call that as uh, hydrostatic, this pressure distribution. Okay. Mm, this is what we discussed. Pressure distribution is determined by the combined effect of gravity and external acceleration. I think you should understand the word external acceleration meaning that is imposed by external agency like the acceleration of the lorry. Okay. Let us apply the equations for an accelerating tank. Let us read the example. We have a 80 centimeter high uh, fish tank, the different views are uh, shown here of cross section 2 meter by 0.5 meter. So, this is 2 meter, this is 2 meter and this is 0.5 meter okay. that is partially filled with water is to be transported on the back of a truck. We are given the height as well 80 centimeter. Okay. So, 2 meters 0.5 meter 80 centimeter and one view is shown here. Uh, let us say uh, this view is shown here 80 centimeter, this could also mean this view also, okay. height is 80 centimeter. Okay. That is why in general this dimension is shown as B okay. and uh, this view is shown here, you will understand why these views are views are shown here. Okay. So, we have that uh, this tank partially filled with water transported on the back of a truck the truck accelerates from 0 to 90 kilometer per hour in 10 seconds. That is why I have been telling you the acceleration is externally imposed either given directly or indirectly. In this case we are given indirectly in terms of change in velocity over a time period. If it is desired that no water spills during acceleration, okay, determine the allowable initial water height in the tank to what level you can fill the water and that depends on the orientation would you recommend the tank to be aligned with the long or short side parallel to the direction of motion? 
that is why both the configurations are shown what does it mean let us say you have a uh, truck okay, which is of course accelerating the x direction would you place this fish tank in this way or in this way. The first is the configuration where the longer side is parallel to the direction of motion okay, and second case is where the shorter side is parallel to the direction of motion okay. that is why all these configurations are shown. So, once again a theoretical equation lot of practical application may not have may not be of commercial importance, but still we use this to do a simple decision whether should my uh, fish tank be kept like this or should it be should be should it be kept like this and then what is the level to which I can fill the water so that there is no spillage okay. Interesting uh, question to answer uh, based on the theoretical equations which we have discussed. Okay. So, assumptions no vertical acceleration constant horizontal acceleration we discussed uh, x axis and then z axis we discuss acceleration along x and acceleration along z we are considering only x acceleration. So, no vertical acceleration constant horizontal acceleration that acceleration can depend on time that will make it more complicated. So, just constant acceleration the constant value. So, let us calculate the acceleration what is the acceleration change in velocity by time interval we are given velocity changes from 0 to 90 kilometer per hour. So, let us convert to SI units the time interval is 10 second. So, you will find the acceleration as 2.5 meters per second squared. Now, now let us find out the slope of the free surface minus A x by G plus A z, A z is 0, G is 9.81 and A x is 2.5. If you substitute you get the slope of the line slope of the surface free surface as minus 0.255. If you convert that to degrees this angle if you convert that to angle you will get this angle as 14.3 degrees ok. What is that we have done? We have used the expression which I derived found out the so slope of this free surface and express that in terms of angle you get 14.3 degrees. Now, as we have discussed earlier maximum vertical rise of free surface occurs at the back side or the rear side front side there is a decrease in level. This is the level of water to begin with when the truck starts accelerating the liquid level increases in the rear side decreases in the front side and now it so happens that this vertical plane the middle plane is the axis of symmetry. So, you have a liquid surface and it goes this way something like tilts uh, about the mid plane ok. So, you have a surface and this moves this way this moves this way and your surface becomes like this ok. So, of course, uh, uh, that is what is shown here the liquid level to begin with and how it changes ok something like uh, a surface like this and becomes like this revolves around the mid plane the mid plane. So, at the mid plane there is no change in water level ok. So, vertical mid plane plane of symmetry a no rise or drop in uh, level okay. what is the rise in water let us see what is the rise in water level and how do we decide the orientation ok. okay. Now, based on this triangle okay, what is tan theta the rise in level this is the rise in level okay, and this is the half width that width depends on the orientation of our tank. So, tan theta is rise in level divided by half width ok. Now, let us consider both the cases first tank aligned along with the long side parallel to the direction of motion this case you have the truck and then the fish tank is kept this way. The long side parallel to the direction of motion of course, the truck is moving in this direction. Now, what is half width? because we are kept in this direction half width is 2 meters divided by 2. So, which gives you 1 meter that is why in general it has been shown as b that b could be half of this or half of this ok. Right now it is 1 meter. So, what is the rise in level 
from this equation it is tan theta into half width tan theta is 0.25 you have seen in the last slide half width is 1 meter in this case so rise in level is 25.5 centimeter okay. now let us take the other case tank aligned with the short side parallel to the direction that is this one so your truck is in this way and uh, it is moving accelerating in this direction the short side is now parallel to the direction of motion what is the half width now the short side divided by 2 which is 0.5 by 2 giving you 0.25 meters in the earlier case it was long side divided by 2 which was 2 divided by 2 1 meter now short side divided by 2 which is 0.5 divided by 2 gives 0.25 meter now what is the rise in level go back to this equation tan theta into half width what is the rise in level go back to this equation okay and uh, the rise in level is tan theta into half width tan theta is 0.255 half width is now 0.25 only giving you only 6.4 centimeter now becomes very clear that we should choose this orientation because the level in increase in water level is only 6.4 centimeter so tank should be aligned with its short side parallel to the direction of motion so instead of keeping like this or okay let's take this one instead of uh, keeping like this we should keep it this way okay and uh, what is the level up to which you can fill the water you can fill the water up to 80 minus 6.4 73.6 centimeter you can fill up to that why is that so this will be 73.6 and when the truck accelerates this will go up by 6.4 centimeter so it will be just up to the brim 80 centimeter there won't be any spillage and of course remember this quantity is independent of the liquid density nowhere we consider liquid density okay. nowhere liquid density played a role so to conclude this example a very simple example nice example okay. you would not imagine that this equation plays a role in deciding whether to transport a fish tank this way or this way and that is what you have seen this plays a role to decide to transport a fish tank this way or this way also tells you what is the level up to which you can fill the water so that there is no spillage so that is a very good uh, uh, example okay. so let us summarize this part of the applications of navier stokes when i say navier stokes one simple few terms in navier stokes okay and similarly this uh, what I discussed earlier the rigid body in motion is also discussed in the uh, beginning chapters of a fluid mechanics book almost after fluids under rest this is discussed we have also discussed that way but the path we have reached there is different okay. so let us summarize uh, this part of the application of navier stokes equation where we considered very, very few terms the simplest and sim, sim, uh, sim, very simple applications and uh, we considered first fluids at rest we considered we discussed the hydrostatic pressure distribution both for liquids and gases then we considered fluids in rigid body motion and uh, where the whole fluid body is subjected to motion and we discussed the pressure uh, distribution now we can understand why hydrostatic pressure distribution here and pressure distribution here okay. of course to begin with the outline it would not have been clear now we can clearly distinguish why it is hydrostatic pressure distribution and uh, pressure distribution here okay.